Hello, my name is Tim Kenny from Tim Kenny Surveying and in this video I want to talk a little bit about liability for residential surveyors. Um, you know, because it's kind of liability which really sets us apart as a profession as opposed to just people doing a job. We are liable because our client is entitled to rely upon our opinion and if we get our opinion or, or our, our professional view wrong then they are entitled to restitution uh, to put them in the place as if we hadn't got it wrong. That's kind of you know, fundamental to making us professional. If we don't have that liability, we're not a professional. Um, with that in mind, I will say that I'm going to kind of, <laughs> I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer, so none of this is, is professional advice, so please don't rely on it. This is just my reflections of having, you know, been a surveyor, an independent surveyor now for some seven or eight years, the kind of the things that I've learned along the way, the information I've picked up, things that I've found, found useful and hopefully you might find useful as well. So first thing that is kind of key to managing your liability as a residential surveyor is, is getting, getting it right. You know, if you don't make mistakes, you can't really be liable for, for mistakes because you haven't made them. Now, sounds a bit kind of obvious, but it's actually there are some, some key things to that. Now, obviously, the first of that is, is, is working within your competency. So only doing the things that you are competent to do, you know, something we should all take quite seriously as, as surveyors. You know, if you are in doubt, then that's probably going to say, no, that's not within your competency. But again, you know, go through your process to make sure you know you're only doing the work that you're supposed to be doing. The other side of it is, is, is getting safe, making sure that, you know, if it is something you're competent to do, make sure you are definitely competent to do is make sure you stay competent doing that. Make sure that you're updating your, your CPD, make sure you are adding the new information in, make sure you're keeping on top of that technical flow of knowledge. And that's that's quite key. But actually, the technical side of it, I think most of us are generally quite good at that. That's not where we really struggle as a, as a profession. Most of us have very good, strong technical knowledge. Can always get better, and, and yet we should always be making it better. But I think that's not really where, where most of the problems lie. Most of the problems actually kind of come down to process, how we actually go about physically doing the job. Now, you may have a lot of experience, you may have been doing it a long time, you may have your process quite good. You know, just because, again, if you, if you repeat something a lot, you generally get good at it. If you're not repeating, if you're not getting good at it from repetition, then there's something gone very wrong there. Um, but how many surveyors actually sit down and take the time to really map out their process and, and keep that in a kind of formal stored document? So you know that you have a, maybe you have a set inspection routine and, you know, even something as basic as, you know, I start outside unless it's raining and going to be dry later, in which case I start inside. Or, or whatever that part of the process is. How many people actually record those physical steps? You know, how many people record whether actually, you know, within their kind of, you know, have a recorded inspection routine? How many people record whether they start at the top and work down? How many people record whether they go around element by element? How many people actually record the detail of the inspection of each element? These can be quite useful. Now, it's, it's kind of a, it's not the owner's job to do that in the first instance and get it all written down. But actually, I think it can be quite, quite important because should you ever find yourself in a position where you're having to stand in front of a, uh, in a courtroom, stand in front of a judge uh, and defend your actions, which is obviously, how, you know, the kind of worst case scenario, how we always have to kind of view these things. If you can pull up a document that says, you know what, this is my standard inspection routine. I know that I generally do this, 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 and this, and this, or that's what I was doing at this, at the time this inspection was carried out because obviously these documents should always be updated and kept kept correct. You know, you know that you can pull up that version of the document that was appropriate for the period where that inspection was carried out and you can say, yep, this is what I gem this is what I would intend to do as an inspection of that property, so therefore I can assume that I probably carried out all of these things. Now, it's not direct evidence, it's not a you know a definite record that I took the meter readings or I did this or I did that, but actually it's indicative and that can be really helpful, particularly if it is backed up by maybe how your template of your site note is set out or by you know uh, the context of the photographs it just is one more layer to, to, to prove that you're a competent and, and good surveyor and that can be very helpful because that can just set the tone for getting things right if you need to um second key thing i would say is building a relationship with your clients you know it's <laughs> it sounds a bit silly but if your client likes you then they're going to view things slightly differently as if they don't like you you know if, if they know you they're going to view things slightly different as if they don't know you. If you are essentially just a, a faceless uh, company to them, 
well then they're going to have no no issues with, with kind of pushing something that maybe actually if it was just dealt with quite uh, in a different way in a, in a slightly more humane way wouldn't cause as many people as much of a problem um the other side of that is, is how you how you present yourself and, it, and again it may sound a bit silly but the packaging <laughs> and, and, and when i talk about the packaging i mean how your website looks how you send them a quote how you, you format your emails how you format your reports all of this kind of uh, fluff around the outside almost can be quite important you know i know there are uh, studies that say that, that if you if you take a cake like a big cake and you put it in a, in a standard box People will pay X amount for it because they think, okay, well, that's quite a cheap cake. If you make the cake smaller and you put it in a fancy box, they'll pay more for it. But more than that, when they actually eat it, they'll think it's a better cake. Um, and that's just because, you know, we're, we're kind of told that certain presentation forms mean something must be better. So therefore we perceive it as better. So if somebody looks at your, your report, they look, look at your website, they look at all the diff information they, you, they receive from you, and that gives them the impression that this is a quality product. You know, and I know surveyors don't like thinking about reports as products, but within this context, I think that's fair. They're going to view things very differently as if it's a little bit scrappy, maybe looks a little bit cheap, a little bit, you know, you've got spelling errors on your website or the website looks a little bit creaky or, you know, you, your, your quote email was very brief and, and, and didn't really wasn't set out right. As soon as they then pick up that report, they're going to be looking at that with a much more critical eye. And that can really make a difference. Um, outside of that is having a, a good complaints procedure, you know, because things do go wrong. You need to make sure your complaints procedure does flow and that you follow it and that it's clear to your client and it's, it's set out in a nice way and it's not set out in an immediately kind of confrontational way. Uh, and that's what can happen quite often. Um, so that's the kind of the, how you sort of manage it on a day-to-day on -day basis. There are, of course, two other fundamental elements that you can look at in terms of managing your liability. Uh, and the first one of those is, uh, is a liability, uh, li liability limitation clause within your terms of engagement, you know, that specifically sets out and says, if something is wrong, the, 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 the firm, the company, the surveyor, whoever, is only liable up to X amount. Quite often that's usually set out as X times the survey fee, or you might set it out as a, a set figure in accordance with your, your your level of cover under your PI, or you could even do it as say the potential of the, the value of the property, potential of the value of the property if you're if you, you know have the value as a recorded issue. Different ways of doing it, and I think again both all have their, their pros and cons and need to be considered carefully. Personally, I use X times the survey fee because I feel that works quite well because I don't get involved in value and bits and pieces like that, and it just it seems a cleaner and easier way of doing that. And, and that can be a really helpful way to do it. Downside of that is, it is not a guarantee. You know, I've had conversations with insurers and, and various other people. And yeah, it's, it's useful to have in there. It kind of sets a little kind of mark in the sand that says, OK, should only be liable up to this much. But actually, if there was something serious and major wrong with it, you know, if you were to go through and find there was a, you know, that you, to, to report nothing and actually the client finds a major structure issue, say subsidence, subsidence or something, no matter what liability clause you've got in there, the courts aren't going to care. You know, they will find whatever they need to do. Uh, and, and obviously we've seen in, in recent years how significant it can be with some of those awards. So it's useful it's it's beneficial it can be helpful i have found that it hasn't made any difference to my pi cover by having that in there which is is a shame but it, it's still helpful in itself but it's not a guarantee the other one that i always think is, is quite a handy one to look at for surveyors is the use of a limited liability company so under english law if you have a limited company it is a separate legal entity it has its own liability but it is only liable up to the value of that company. So the company only has assets of say £100,000, it can only be liable to £100,000. Um, that's the way company law is structured, it's the way it's worked for a couple hundred years. <laughs> we can have a whole long conversation as to whether company law is actually a beneficial thing for society, but that's probably something for a, a different video. But it does mean that the owners of that company are not personally liable for any debts incurred by that company. Obviously, you have to, to demonstrate that you are actively trading as that company. The person is aware it's a company. The, you know, the person that you're engaging in a contract with is aware that it's a company. And there's, there's rules that are around that. And you need to make sure you're complying with those. But if you comply with those, should something happen, 
and you need to shut down the company, in theory you can. You know, <laughs> it's a practice that is quite often used by you know, unscrupulous double glazing salesmen or, you know, bits and pieces like that. But the, the law exists, it is usable. Um, and it's not, not unreasonable to kind of take it in the view of the context of a, a surveyor. So I, as a, a surveyor, technically work for the company that I'm also a director of. All reports that I, I do are, are provided for that company. It clearly states that within the terms of engagement, states it again within the report. So although I'm the individual professional carrying out the inspection and providing the report, I'm doing that on behalf of my company. So I'm acting as an employee of that company, not as an, an individual. So my client has a contractual relationship with the company, not with me. Again, that's all make, you've got to make sure that's very clear within all the documentation that they're dealing with. Um, and that means that should the worst case scenario happen, you know, <laughs> again, this is not a question of maybe avoiding it in, a, in an unscrupulous way. For example, if you were to, you know, the worst should happen and, and you were to kind of die after providing a report and then someone's come along and, and try and make a claim against your estate. Well, actually, by having a limited company there, you provide some, some a measure of security for, for, for your loved ones when you, when you go, because they are not going to have to, to deal with that whilst also dealing with your estate. And, and, and these things do happen and these can be difficult for surveyors to deal with. Um, again, it's, these things are never quite foolproof. Um, courts don't like leaving clients kind of hanging a little bit. So there is some, some, some law around whether the individual professional is still, still liable, even if it's a company run, it's, it's done through a company. Um, so it's again, you know, none of these things are ever going to be clear cut. We can't say for certain, you know, if you've done all of these things, you've, you've excluded liability should the worst happen. But they can be helpful. And they're just some things to think about. Um, again, you know, if you really do want to kind of look more into it, there are company lawyers that provide a bit more advice and you can speak to insurers and all these other bits and pieces. Again, with lawyers, they always charge you a fee for doing that, but you know, it, it might be worth it if you really need to understand in a little bit more depth where you might want to, to manage and control some of that liability for you as, a, as an individual residential surveyor. Um, so I hope you found that helpful. It's just my kind of quick uh, thoughts and musing on, on, on how we can manage liability while still staying reasonable and providing a good service to our clients. Thank you very much.